In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Two of our Gospel readings today referenced the power that Christ has to forgive sins. It's interesting that it was the Lord himself that also was the first to say that we should call our God, our Creator, Father. Jesus said this. Jesus taught us that the Lord who created us is indeed our Father. And through baptism, we can become God's children. This whole notion of, of forgiveness is, is also a, a major milestone when it comes to Scripture and to belief in the, in the uh, eternal God. And that is that, let me put it this way, back in my days as a therapist, I remember a bunch of us sitting around talking about the, the, the Catholic Church had this, this extra thing that we didn't have. It could actually forgive people's sins. And so they would be released of the guilt that they were struggling with. And the self-blame. Of course, orthodoxy has this. But it is important for us to remember that it isn't just a bunch of people that sat around and thought, oh, what a great addition this would be to our religion. This is the second person of the Trinity telling us that in God we have not only a Father, but we have a Father that is quick to forgive. In the early church, and I'm really glad we don't do this anymore, people made confessions publicly. And then the penance was usually they had to stand in the narthex and ask forgiveness for their sins and then be specific when people would be coming into the temple. Aren't you glad we don't do that anymore? Our churches might be empty in this day and age. But when we look at the power that we have in the Eucharist, that we have in preparation for the Eucharist, the opportunity to confess our sins. These are important. These make all the difference in the world when it comes to what it means to be a Christian. And yet so often we take all of this so for granted. I can tell you as a priest, I've heard people come up with a little reading list, a short little one, and use that as their confession. But, but it was at the same year, week after week, year after year, the same little thing they would read. And that's not a good way to approach confession. We should examine our heart during the week. And we have to take a few notes in order to remember we do that. But we are we take confession seriously. And we take the Eucharist seriously. It's not just getting in line and being with people and having this, uh, this bread and wine. So many Protestants and even Roman Catholics today have that view. It's not like that there's anything different than that and, and just hanging around a pizza place and passing slices of pizza. This is more spiritual in their mind. But ultimately, is it spiritual? Or, it, or is it contributing to this illusion that God doesn't even exist? When, when I was young, there was a, our society itself kind of encouraged, in a, in a lukewarm way, but encouraged faith. And most people saw themselves as Christians or religious. And that's not the case anymore. And the fact that this monastery has attracted so many young men on retreat, including last weekend when we had 18 guys here for the weekend for four days, and I see in them the need, the innate need that they have and that they recognize 
that this Christian journey is not just about me, it's about us. It's about Christian friendships. And if our friends are, on the, for the most part, not even Orthodox, then we are cheating ourselves. Because it's that kind of friendship that is not just friendship because we have the same humor or like the same beer or our neighbors. It is a friendship that is based in a common belief in an acceptance of the Orthodox faith and being part of the body of Christ. That is so important. And it's when we make a, a strong effort on a daily basis to prepare for confession and to prepare for the Eucharist. And in a way that is truly recognizing in our heart of hearts that we're not just taking bread and wine, we are receiving life. We are receiving the very body and blood of the Savior. That is what makes our Orthodox faith worth all of the ridicule that we might get, all of the marginalization we might experience, which is, I think, why so many people keep their mouths shut about their faith, or refrain from making the sign of the cross before they eat their meal in the restaurant because the friend might think that's weird. We need to look at the martyrs for, as an example of what we should be doing. In the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us.